Hi there, my name is Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to be setting up the PlayStation 4 Pro. Now this is going to be a complete setup from beginning, this has never even been turned on before. Now this video is intended for beginners, those of you that have never set up a gaming console before or possibly those of you that haven't set one up in maybe the last 15 years. So I'm going to go into the very basics of it, it's going to be connected up to a 4K TV and I'm going to set up the 4K and HDR and basically go into every single detail of the initial setup. Now you don't need to have a 4K TV for the PlayStation 4 Pro. If you've got a 1080p or a 720p, that's fine also. It's just that you're going to get more benefits if you use a 4K TV because you're going to have benefits like HDR. Most 4K TVs have HDR built in them, which is high dynamic range. So basically it's going to give you more colours. So the blacks look blacker, there's more shades of white. So when you look up at the clouds, for example, in a game, you're going to see a lot more definition with HDR turned on. So to begin with, let's unbox it and then we're going to go through the setup. Now this particular video is intended for people that haven't had a PlayStation account before. So we're going to have to set up a new PlayStation Network account and everything. Right, let's unbox this thing. Now this is a one terabyte model, so you're looking at a thousand gigabytes. So if, for example, when you're installing digital games or any games, if you have a look at the back of this game here, this is Horizon Zero Dawn. If we have a look at the back, you can see here that you need a minimum of 43.2 gigabytes. So if you just do very simple maths, and let's just call that 50 gigabytes, you're going to be able to install roughly around 20 of these games on the hard drive before it's full. But if it fills up, don't worry about it because you can still just install an external hard drive, which is really easy, you just need to plug it in. So with it we get a little mono headset, so this is if you want to do online chat on your game, so you'll be able to hear your friends through here and you'll be able to speak through the microphone. It is mono, meaning it's only in one ear. You can get stereo headsets very cheap, so it's good if you like to do this sort of thing, to, just to upgrade to a stereo headset, starting from £15 upwards. Or, well, we've got our power cable here as well. We've got our charging cable, which is a micro, a USB to a micro USB. So that's what we're going to charge our DualShock 4 controller with. We've got an HDMI lead to connect it up to the TV. Now use the supplied lead because this is going to be a HDMI 2 lead. If you were to use other leads, chances are you would be okay, but if you were to use one of the older HDMI leads, not the high speed version, then you might find that you struggle to get 4K out of it. And we've got our DualShock 4 controller. This is a version 2 DualShock 4 controller. So basically very similar to the version 1 except that we've got the light bar here and also these are a slight different shade. The buttons are more grey rather than black. And there's the beast. Right, so we've got a couple of USB ports at the front here, so we can charge our controller from there. And also, the first time we use it, we need to plug it in to sync it up to the console. Just quickly show you the back here. We've got our power cable that goes in here. We've got a HDMI cable that goes to the TV here. This one here you won't be using unless you're going to get a PlayStation camera. For example, for PlayStation VR, you know, with your virtual reality headsets. This one here is an optical cable, so a Toslink, an SPDIF. This is if you wanted to take separate sounds out. So with your HDMI, it's going to carry picture and sound. This one, though, will be, for example, if you wanted to use some optical headsets, and then they will take their sound from here. Or you might have a separate sound system that you want to connect up. We've got another USB port here, and we've got our Ethernet port here. So with this, it's got Wi-Fi built into it, but you've got an option to do a wired connection, but I will talk about that when we're setting up the network. Basically, a wired connection is always going to give you the most hassle-free, best solution, because you just plug it in, and it works. If you can't get a wire to this because of the location of it, then you're going to have to rely on Wi-Fi, but I will discuss that later on. Right, so it does come with a little quick start guide. 
and let's just open it up and see what it recommends to do first. So basically it's saying, let's get started, connect to your TV, follow steps one to four below to connect your PlayStation 4 to your TV. So we're gonna have to put the AC power cord in and we're gonna have to put the HDMI cable out to the TV. So let's do that. So first of all, I'm gonna use the HDMI cable to the TV. Now this is what the cable looks like. It's actually labelled up as HDMI as well, and it's just under two meters in length. So that's going to give you an idea now of whether you can use the supplied cable. So all we're going to be doing is connecting it into the HDMI port in the back of the PlayStation 4 Pro. So let's just turn this round so we've got easy access. And now the HDMI cable will only go in one way round. So basically, you have to look at the shape there and you have to copy it. It's going to be the wider side on the top, and we just need to put it in nice and gently but also firmly and we need to make sure it's fully pushed home so now that's not going to go in any further and I'm happy that that's fully in now I'm going to leave the other side just disconnected for the moment now I'm going to get the power lead right this is a UK power lead here obviously depending on the country you're in it's going to look different and we've got this connector at the other end again it's shaped so we can't plug it in the wrong way it was only going to go in one way but we need to push it in and then we need to give it a nice good push to make sure it's fully home. Now if you wanted to connect up a wired ethernet cable it doesn't actually come in the pack so in the pack you're going to just have to rely on connecting it up via Wi-Fi but if you do want the best possible connection for your online gaming and also if you're downloading digital games normally if you have a wired connection it works quicker than Wi-Fi. This is what an ethernet cable looks like you can see that it's got eight gold pins on it and it's shaped like that. And you can get them very cheaply off eBay and Amazon in whatever length you need. So just for the purpose of the video, I am just gonna connect up the ethernet, but I will show you later on how to do the Wi-Fi as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug this into the ethernet port, which is the very last port here on the right-hand side as you're looking at the back. And again, you can only plug it in one way around. If you have a look at the shape of that, you can see the retaining clip there goes at the bottom. So it just clicks into place. So listen for the click, and there it goes clicks in. So that is basically the PlayStation 4 Pro connected up at the back with the power, the HDMI cable and also the Ethernet cable. So now we're going to get our power cable and we're going to plug it into our power supply but I'm not going to turn it on just yet. I would say the power lead looks to be about one and a half meters long so 150 centimeters. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug the HDMI lead into the back of the TV. Now, this is where it will depend on your TV where you're going to connect it to. So basically, I've got a Samsung 4K TV. And on this one, because this is one of the cheaper models, it will only enable HDR on HDMI 1. So if you have a look at the back here, I've got three options to plug it into. But... If I want HDR, which I do, I mean HDR looks really good when you're gaming, then I need to plug it into HDMI 1. And also, I need to enable HDR on that port as well via the options in the menu, but I'll come to that in a little while. So I'm gonna unplug whatever's plugged into HDMI 1. Now obviously here, I've already got three things plugged in. So you're gonna to have to look into getting something like a HDMI switch unless you can move part of that equipment to another room. So for example, you might have a Blu-ray player plugged in here, but now you don't need your Blu-ray player anymore because you've got your PlayStation 4, which will also play your Blu-ray discs. So I'm gonna unplug number one there, and I'm gonna plug my HDMI cable in. Again, you have to look at the shape of the port and you have to marry up this to go into it. And you can see now it's gone fully in. Now, when it comes to the other end of the Ethernet cable, this is where you have to find your router. Your router is basically the box of tricks that your internet service provider gives you to enable you to get access to the internet. So we call it a router in the UK, but in other parts of the world, you will know it as a router. And what I need to do is I need to connect up the Ethernet cable to one of the spare ports. So I've already got three in use here, so I'm going to connect it up. Luckily, I've got one spare there. So I'm going to connect it up there. Now also, if you're doing wireless, then you will need to have a look at the back of your router to set up the Wi-Fi. And you will need your Wi-Fi key for that, or wireless key, or it might be known as a passphrase. With this one now, I've changed it, so that's why I'm showing this one 
over the internet because it doesn't matter because I've changed this anyway. But basically you will need to make a note of this or in this case you can just bring this over to your PlayStation 4 because that's the idea. They make it removable to make it easy for you to set things up. So later on when it's asking for the wireless key, that's what you need to be typing in. Not that one, you need to look at the back of your router and you need to write down the wireless key or it might be password or passphrase. You will also need to find out your SSID. The SSID is what the router is called. So in this instance, you can change it again, but this router is called a BT Hub 5 JZ6H. But you will need to connect to your SSID, otherwise you're gonna end up trying to connect to, for example, one of your neighbor's routers. Right, okay, so I've just got the long cable now just thrown on the floor. I mean, for the purpose of this video, I'm just showing you how to do this. I have actually got all my cables and stuff hidden in the wall, so that's I'm going to be connecting that up myself later on. Right, so we've connected up the power, we've connected up the HDMI, we've connected up the Ethernet. It is now time to turn on the TV and also time to turn on the PlayStation. So I'm going to turn it on at the plug socket over here now. And if you look very closely on the left hand side, you can actually see a very small little icon. There you go, can you see that? Which is the power button there. So I'm just gonna tap this button here. And you can see now I've got a nice blue bar going across the front of it and it's given me a little indication, a little beep to let me know that it's been turned on. But our TV is still off. So let's now turn on our TV and we also have to select the correct input as well. So I'm going to turn it on. Now do you remember I plugged it into HDMI 1 at the back? Well now I need to select HDMI 1 on the TV. So on my TV here I need to go to where it says source. Your TV might be called input. This is another remote control from another TV in the house and can you see this one's called input? So have a look for source or input and then hopefully that will allow you to select the correct input at the back. So I'm gonna to go to source and I've got it already labeled up as game console but on your TV it will probably just be HDMI 1 or HDMI 2 or HDMI 3. So we're gonna to go to that and we're gonna press enter. Right, and now it's telling us on screen, it says DualShock 4 and it's telling us to plug it in via the USB cable. So you can see there, first of all plug it into the PlayStation 4 console and then plug it in to the controller and then press the PlayStation button. So that's what we're gonna do now. So remember I showed you that we had two USB ports at the front here? We can use either one of them, it doesn't matter which one we use. Now when it comes to USBs, again, they have to be only put in one way around and sometimes if you force it a bit and you put it in the wrong way, it can actually start to damage the port over time. So if you have a look at this here, you can see that the bottom half is filled in white and the top half's empty. We wanna keep the empty top half at the top. So this is gonna be the top. So the bottom white bit is gonna be facing the bottom of the console and the empty bit is gonna be facing the top of the console. So we're just gonna choose one of the ports I'm going to choose that one there and I'm going to plug it in there and you have to plug it in nice and firmly all the way. And now we're going to plug the other end into our DualShock 4 controller and again you can see it's shaped. You can see that it's beveled at the edge here, it goes down so the top bit is actually larger than the bottom bit. So again we have to marry it up the same way. So the top bit here goes in here, nice and gently push it in like so. And now we'll look back up at the TV and we're gonna hit the PlayStation button. There we go, and now it's asking what language do we wanna use. So I'm gonna do English, United Kingdom. I'm gonna press the X button. So you'll find that on the PlayStation 4 that the X will be confirmed. So I'm pressing the X button, and it also tells you here, it says X to enter. So it's gonna prompt you what to do on screen. So if you're ever unsure, just look around the screen and it will prompt you what to do next. Now, let's start setting up your PlayStation 4 system. We're gonna set up the internet connection, we're gonna connect a PlayStation camera, well, we're not. We're gonna set the date and time, and we're gonna adjust power saving settings. So we're gonna press X for enter, or the circle to go back. So if you've ever made a mistake and you wanna go back one, so for example now, if you've realized you've done the wrong language, just press the circle, and it will take you back to the previous screen, okay? Right, so X for next. Right, at the moment we've got a wired connection, so let's just skip straight through that now. 
was asking us, how do we want to connect to the network? Use Wi-Fi or use a LAN cable? I'm going to go up to Wi-Fi and press X. And it's asking me, which Wi-Fi network do you want to use? Now, remember I told you what the SSID on the router was earlier? Well, you need to find your one because using this, you're going to have a load of other people's connections as well. Also, a lot of routers now support this WPS button, which is Wi-Fi Protected Setup. So it saves you having to enter in a password. It will just do it automatically for you. For the purpose of the video, I will be entering the password. So I'm going to click on my particular router, which is this BT Hub up here. Now, there's two networks you can often choose from. It can be, it depends on your router, but sometimes you can choose between a 2.4 gigahertz and a 5 gigahertz. Basically, if your router is quite far away, opt for the 2.4 gigahertz. If your router is close to your PlayStation, then opt for the 5 gigahertz one. So you've seen how close my router was, it was just across there. So I'm gonna click the 5 gigahertz one and press X. And now I've got to put in the password. So I'm just gonna point the camera away for this little bit. Now the password is what I showed you on the back of the thing. So for example, the wireless key or the passphrase. And now I'm just gonna go to done and then okay. So I'm pressing okay now and it's saying please wait. Right now it's checking network environment. And once it's happy with it, it will then go through to the next page. There you go, so it's happy now, it's connected via Wi-Fi. And it's same here, we've gone to the next page about the PlayStation camera, but we're not setting up a PlayStation camera just yet. But if you're setting up your PlayStation VR, then this is where you would have to put your PlayStation camera into that auxiliary port, the AUX port at the back of the PlayStation Pro. And now we're gonna just skip that one. And now it's asking us for what time zone are we in? Well, I'm near London, so I'm just gonna do London. You would move it up and down. You can use the, uh, if I go back a second, you can use the left analog stick or the D-pad to go up and down. So it's up to you. So basically, let me just talk you through the buttons on the controller quickly. We've got left analog stick, right analog stick. This is called your D-pad or directional pad. And then you've got your buttons here, X, square, triangle, and circle. Options button here, share button here. L1, L2, these are your shoulder buttons. And we've also got R1 and R2. We've also got this touchpad in the middle here, which works as a touchpad, and also we can click it. So for certain things, you'll be able to click that in the middle. And we've also got a PlayStation button here. We've got a little speaker here, so on certain games, it can produce a sound through the controller. And we've also got a little headphone jack here. So if you wanted to plug in some wired headphones, this will do sound and your microphone as well. So it's like a headset. So if you can plug in a wired headset into here, and then you can hear your friends talk and you can also talk to them. You can also set it up where you have the game play audio coming through here as well. So if it was late at night, you can plug some headphones into here, mute your TV, and then all the sound will just be coming through this headphone jack. Right, so London, and now it says, please set the time and date. Now, because I've already connected to the internet via the ethernet cable, you can see now it's set up the correct time and date. So I can go to next. And now set the time until the PS4 automatically turns off when you're not operating it. I'm gonna leave it on default settings. Obviously you can change all this, so you can do it after one hour or do not turn off. Let's come back and change this later. None of this is final, you can always change it later. So don't be worried if you don't fully understand something. You can always go back. The only thing you won't be able to change is your PlayStation Network ID. Once you choose that name, that's gonna stay with you. So don't do something stupid, offensive, racist, anything like that. And remember, you might have this PlayStation Network ID for the next 15 or 20 years or longer. So again, maybe don't pick something that's really childish because you're gonna be stuck with it for a long time. This may change in the future, but as of now, PlayStation, don't let you change your network ID name. Right, okay, so I'm gonna to go to X for next. Now it's saying, select the features you want to use in rest mode. The more you select, the more power the PS4 will consume. So remember, the PS4 uses electricity and electricity costs money. So it depends on how much money you have or how much money your parents have. You might wanna turn off the PlayStation fully after you've used it, in which case then it's not gonna be using anything. If you leave it on standby, often it's ticking over and it's just using a little bit of 
which means it's using a little bit of money but it means things can happen in the background so for example supply power to the USB ports so that means you can charge up your controller even when your PlayStation's off so I'm going to go up to that and I'm going to turn that on so you can leave it for always or three hours well I'm just going to leave it for three hours but again it's up to you it's quite nice to come back to your controller fully charged when you want a game otherwise you're going to have to look at charging it when you're gaming or other options to charge it. Right, stay connected to the internet. While in rest mode, the PS4 can download update files and content and upload saved data. Now, if you haven't used a console in a long time, the problem with them nowadays is they often update themselves. And these updates can be pretty big and can take a lot of time. So maybe if you're only gonna be using this once every few weeks, you might go to play it, and then you can't play it because it needs to update. And you've gotta sit there for the next half an hour, 45 minutes or an hour while the thing updates. So basically, if you were to leave it connected to the internet in rest mode, then it can do these things while you're not using it. So for example, it can do it when you're asleep in bed at night. So again, I'm gonna say stay connected to the internet. And now it will say enable turning on of the PS4 from network. So the PlayStation 4 can be turned on by using the PS4 link application available for the PS Vita and PlayStation TV system or the PlayStation app available for smartphones and tablets. What this basically means is with the PlayStation there's a great feature that you can do from your laptop and also the PlayStation Vita called Remote Play. And that's where you can be out of the house or in a different part of the house, you can be in a different part of the world and you can still play your home console on another piece of equipment such as your laptop or your PlayStation Vita. So if I enable turning off on of the PS4 from the network, it means that when I've got my PlayStation Vita or your laptop connected to a network, even if it's in another country, it will allow you to turn on your PlayStation 4 at home and play the games when you're away. Now, it's heavily dependent on how good the internet connection is. If you've got a bad connection, it's not gonna connect at all, or the game's gonna be really laggy, it's gonna keep breaking up and stuff. But if you've got a good internet connection, it does actually work pretty well, and it's definitely worth testing out because it's a great little feature. Okay, so I'm gonna enable that. Now, keep applications suspended. Applications are kept suspended while in rest mode. The next time you use your PS4, you can quickly continue from where you left off. So basically, if you've got an app, you can just have it suspended rather than completely shut down. So when you come to use it again, it's already there, ready to turn on nice and quick. Well, I'm just gonna leave that one off, but again, that's completely up to you. So I'm gonna go to next and press X. And now I've got to accept the software license agreement. So what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to go down now and read all of that. Make sure you're happy with it. If you're not happy with it, then you're gonna put do not accept and you won't be able to use the PlayStation 4. So you have to go over to accept and press X once you're happy with it. Now there you go, setup of your PlayStation 4 is complete. Enjoy an exciting world of entertainment. Start now. X. A later version of the system software is ready to be installed. If there are any applications in use, select update later and then save your progress in the applications. So basically, like anything, it will need an update. So the first time you use it, even it's a Christmas day and you're desperate to play it, you don't have to update it now, but you might as well do it at the beginning and then you're starting fresh with all the latest software. So I'm gonna do update now and I'm gonna press X. System software of the PS4 will be updated. The PS4 will restart and start the update. So I'm gonna press X. So basically, it says here, do not turn off the PS4 during installation. When the installation is complete, the PS4 will restart automatically. And you'll see on my controller now, it's kind of, that's just a normal standard charging color. But when it comes back on again and we hit the PlayStation button, it will go to a blue color. So this will change depending on what player you are. So player one will be blue, but then as you go through the different players, the colors will change here. So it gives an indication of what player you are. Right, okay, so if you see what I mean now, you can see that it's orange. As soon as I hit this PlayStation button, it's gonna to go to blue, because it's asking me to press the PlayStation button. And you can just see it here. Right now, it says here, who's using this controller? User one. So we haven't named ourselves yet. So yes, I'm user one. Press X. 
Now it says, get more out of your PS4, download the latest games and demos from the PlayStation Store, become friends with other players and chat with them, show all your great moments. You can create a new account or use an existing one. Well, remember I said at the beginning that we're going to be setting this up from scratch on someone that's never played PlayStation before or never owned a console before. So basically, I'm going to be doing it as if we're a complete new account. So I'm going to do X. Now, one other thing you might read up about is something called the PlayStation Plus. PlayStation Plus allows you to play online games, and some games like Overwatch, you have to have PlayStation Plus. Let me just get that disc to show you what I mean. Right, so if we look at Overwatch here, you will see that it says here, Internet Connection and PlayStation Plus required to play. So unfortunately, if you were to get this game on Christmas Day, you won't be able to play this until you sign up for PlayStation Plus. But then... Here, a DNS server cannot be used. The DNS server did not respond within the time limit. If you've selected suggested actions... X. Right, if you can connect to the internet, Select Network Test Internet Connection, then check your internet connection status, and then restart your router, restart your PS4. So basically, we're having problems at the moment connecting to the internet. So I can skip this, but I want to set up a network account. Now, this could be a problem on PlayStation's end. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's a problem with what I've done here. But what I again and see what happens. Now, when you're setting up your PlayStation or any games console for this matter, you always have to leave yourself a good amount of time. You might be lucky and you might get through it in half an hour, 45 minutes, but often it can take hours to get through by the time you've done your updates and sorted out problems. Now, while it's doing that, what I am going to do is I can now actually unplug this. It will still work. You just need to plug it in to charge it up and sync it up. So if I unplug this now, you can see that it's still going to work but it's still saying up here, a DNS server cannot be used. The DNS server did not respond within the time limit. So this might be a problem on the PlayStation end. So I'm just gonna go down to OK and press X. Now you can see I'm not using the cable anymore. When you first will get your PlayStation, give it a good charge, plug it in to begin with, but just for the purpose of the video, I'm gonna leave it unplugged now. Right, so I'm gonna have to go to skip because there's nothing I can do. I've connect skip for the time being all finally set up you won't have to go through a long process every time you want to play it it's just the initial setup that takes the time after that you just turn it on and then within a minute or two you can be playing your game right discover you can also operate your ps4 with your voice so it does have voice control but you need to plug in a headset into here so for example if i was to use just this little rubbish mono one that comes with it. I say it's rubbish, it's only because there's only one speaker here, so it's not gonna be very good quality. It says up here, microphone switch to headset connected to controller. And if we have a very close look here, you can see here that it says off and on for the mic. So that would be on and that would be off. So basically, get used to doing this because for example, if somebody comes in and they're having an argument with you, or you know, you're saying something personal to someone, then you don't want the whole of the party that you're playing the game with to hear. So that would be off, and then that would be on. So for example now, if I was to speak into here, you can do some very simple commands. If I was to say, PlayStation, PlayStation, all commands, and it gives me a list of what I can do up here. Start community, start friends, etc., etc. login, Right, who will log into the PlayStation 4 system? Well, let me just go back off this now. Yeah, so basically you can do simple things on here that will allow you to work off the voice commands, but only when this is plugged in. So I'm just going to, again, unplug this for the time being. I'm limited to what I can do if I haven't got an internet connection. So I'm just going to go up now and I'm going to go across to settings. So basically this is your settings here, the toolbox, and I'm just using the left analog stick or you can use the D-pad. And then when you get to settings, press X. And now I'm going to go down to where it says network and I'm going to press X. And I'll view status of PlayStation Network Services. 
Right, it says here all services are up and running, so it should now be working. So I'm going to just tap the PlayStation button to bring me to home, and now let's go and see if we can sign in. I'm going to go over to profile. Right, create. Right, so it says create a Sony Entertainment Network account or sign in with an existing one. So this will often be known as your PSN, your PlayStation Network account, so PSN account. You can share all your great moments, chat with your friends while playing games together or download the latest games and demos for PlayStation Store. So let's sign in to PlayStation Network and hopefully that will give me an option to become a new user. Right, same here, an error has occurred. Right, here we go, PlayStation Network. Go online by signing into the PlayStation Network. So I need to put in an email address and a password if I'm an existing one, but I'm not. We're going to pretend now that I'm new to it. So I need to go down to the bottom one where it says new to PlayStation Network, create an account. So I'm going to hit X. And this is where you're going to have to fill in your details. Now, it can be quite hard to actually find the name that hasn't gone already. Right, and it's saying, you know, what you can get. You open up a world of online PlayStation 4. So you've got all these things you can do. You can buy games from the store. You can go onto PlayStation Now, but that doesn't really work very well. And you can connect with your friends. And PlayStation Plus is what you need because then you can play online with your friends and also it gives you a couple of free games each month as well and the odd time they do release a game that you do want to play. Right, okay, so I'm going to go down to sign up now and I'm pressing X and it's going to enter in my details. So unfortunately now I will have to do this off camera but I'm going to... summary below and select continue to proceed if you would like to change whether we personalize your ads and purchase recommendations which you can do at any time select modify so okay let's uh, go down to continue and I'm going to press X games choose who can see your gaming activities so for example please review the following agreements and policies you must accept them all before continuing so okay, so basically you need to read all that and make sure you're all happy with it and then when you are, you will go down to accept and press X. Error has occurred. Let's press X and see what's happened. Your PlayStation Network sign-in information has been saved on this PS4. Well that's a little bit confusing, but it says an error is concerned, but it looks like it's gone through. So if you have a look down at the bottom there, I've got my avatar symbol and it also says my mate Vince. So it looks like nobody else has taken that one. And now I'm going to go to OK. Right, it says sign into PlayStation Network. So it still hasn't signed me in. So now what you need to do is you need to go over to your laptop or your phone or your PC and you need to log into your emails and you need to find the one from PlayStation and you need to verify that new account that you've just set up. So I've done that now, so now I'm going to go over to PlayStation Plus I'm going to see if I can sign into my PlayStation Network. So I'm just going to go off screen again. Now I'm going to enter my password. and I'm going to go to sign in. Right, when you log into the PS4 next time, you will automatically be signed into the PlayStation Network. If other people have access to this PS4, set a login passcode so they cannot log into this PS4 as you. A login password can be set by selecting settings, login settings, login passcode management. So it depends on who you live with. If you've got a house share with a load of other people, then you would want to be setting up a passcode. If it's just your family and you trust your kids and your wife, etc., then you don't need one. So in this instance, I'm not going to be setting up a passcode. So I'm going to go to OK. Right, and now you have the options, for example, to join PlayStation Plus. So you see that you haven't got the full range of features until you verify it on your actual email. So you do have to go onto that computer or your laptop or something and verify the email. Otherwise, it will just keep coming up with an error like you've seen earlier. So, for example, now I can join PlayStation Plus and this is where you can pay per month or per year. For example, three months is £20, 12 months is £50. If you actually go online and find one of the 
sellers online that sell digital codes for your PlayStation Plus, then normally you can get it for just under £40. Right, okay, so I'm going to get out of that. Now let me show you how to play a game. So, basically I've already set up the Horizon Zero Dawn. The first time you do this, it will take about 15 minutes to get all the information from here onto the PlayStation. But every time you play it, you will still need to insert the disc. So what you need to do is take your disc out, handle it nice and carefully, label side up, and we're gonna look down at the PlayStation 4 Pro, and we're gonna be putting it in this section here, and just nice and gently offer it up, and it will take the disc in, label side up, mirror side down. And then what will happen is it will bring up this bit here, and then when you go to click on Horizon Zero Dawn, it will then load up the game X. And now it's gonna load up the game straight away. Right, and now you can play your game like you would normally play. So for example, remember I mentioned earlier that there was only one HDMI port on my TV that has that setting for HDR. So let me just show you the settings on the TV to make sure that's enabled. So remember we plugged it into HDMI 1? Well now if I was to go to settings on the remote control, so this is a TV now, this has nothing to do with the PlayStation 4. So I'm going to go to settings, and if you have a look at picture, I'm going to go down to where it says expert settings. Now this is on a Samsung TV, it will obviously vary depending on your TV. So I'm just going to go to enter, and on Samsung they call their version of HDR HDMI UHD color. Now, this TV isn't full HDR. It's still better than not having it on, but the more expensive TVs will have a better HDR than this TV. So for example, now I'm gonna to go to enter and I need to enable it. So at the moment, I've already enabled it, but by default, that will be to off. So what you will have to do is you will have to go to where it says HDMI one, you will have to do that and you will have to turn it to on and press enter. Now, if you have a look, you can see if I was to try to do that on two and three, it doesn't let me do it. On other Samsung TVs, they will be enabled on all the HDMIs, but on my one, they're not. And then if I go to close and exit, we will now have HDR enabled on this TV. And what it will mean is that if, for example, you were to look at the sky, you will see better definition when it comes to the clouds and the blacks will be darker than normal. Really, you're only going to really notice it when they're side by side. So if you had a non-HDR TV and a HDR TV side by side, you would notice the difference. But when you're just watching it here, it's hard to compare it to anything. Now, let me just show you the settings on the PlayStation because you might be worried that, for example, it's not 4K. Well, let me just show you that now. Also, to stop the game now, all we're going to do is press the PlayStation button. And then if we were to press the Options button, it will then bring up this here, close application, or for example, if you wanna put another disc in, you can actually go down to remove disc, and what it will do is it will eject the disc for you. So I'm gonna press X, and now if I go down, you will see that after about 20 seconds, the disc will come out. There you go, and it's come out, and nice and gently, just pull it out the rest of the way. If you wanna eject it itself, it's not a problem because you have the eject symbol there. So if you have a look closely there, you will see that there's a little symbol here and that's for eject. So if I was just to tap that there, again, the disc will come out. Right, let me show you those 4K settings. Right, if we go up to the toolbox again, up to settings, so we're gonna go up and we're gonna go across to settings. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to where it says sound and screen and we're gonna press X and we're gonna to go to video output settings. We wanna make sure it's on automatic. So if I was to click that now, you see on this TV, I've got all the options. If you were to plug it into a 1080p TV or a 720p TV, you're not gonna have these other options. But down the bottom, you can see that I've got the 4K options there. So right now, the PlayStation 4 has picked the best option, which will be 4K. And if we go down to HDR, you see HDR is also on automatic. And if I go down to video output information and press X, you can see here, it tells me what I've got. So I've got my current video signal output is 3840 times 2160, and that's at 60 Hertz. So basically that's 4K at 60 frames per second. But what that means is you'll see in 60 images per second. So imagine now if you took a picture of my hands, 
moved it a little bit, took another picture and another picture and another picture and another picture, just like the old fashioned cartoons, it shows like, you know, so many frames per second. Well, this is given 60 frames per second, so it's gonna be really smooth. Uh, and if you have a look down there, you see HDR supported. So at the moment, we have got 4K at 60 frames per second, which is what we want. Now, if you're having problems, if it's not coming up with HDR, that's where you need to look into your TV to make sure you've correctly plugged it into the right HDMI and that you've enabled HDR on the TV because not only do you have to enable it on the PlayStation 4 or set it to automatic, it also has to be enabled on the TV as well. Right, okay, so loads of different things you can do. I'm not gonna go into everything you can do on a PlayStation 4 because obviously we'll be here all year. But for example, you know, you can go onto the internet browser and then you can make it big screen. It tells you down the bottom there, full screen. So for example, here we've got PlayStation VR and then we can move around. And if you have a look, you know, it looks nice. So if you wanna look something up, it's not as user friendly as using a laptop or a PC, but it's still nice and clear and you've got a nice big screen to work off. And when it comes to entering in things, remember that this also has motion control as well and a touch screen. So let's say if I was to go up to search up here, press triangle for search, and let's say now if I was to move this round, can you see now it's moving around on screen? So if you were to put in uh, Xbox, you could do X and then just hit the middle and then do B, hit the middle, or we could also use motion control. So if we were to tap R3, which is basically, yeah. Uh, two buttons I didn't tell you about earlier was L3 and R3. If we click in the analog sticks, there are other buttons. So it says here to do R3. So this would be the right analog stick in. This is L3, this is R3. So now if I move that in there, and now you can try moving the controller as shown in the animation. So you can see now, if I was to move here, it moves that way and up and down. So let's go to got it and press X. And now it's very hard, I find, but if you were to go to the rest of Xbox, and then we could go down to search. So different ways of using it, motion control and also touchpad as well. Right, so that is the basics of setting up your PlayStation 4 Pro. So right now, I've shown you how to connect it all up, use an ethernet cable for the best signal, if not, use Wi-Fi. I've shown how to set up the PlayStation network, I've shown how to make sure you've got HDR and 4K. And now lastly, the last thing is to make sure we turn it off properly. Never, ever, ever just unplug it. Just like a PC, we have to shut this down properly. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing it from here and we're gonna be holding down the PlayStation button. And now it's brought up this quick menu here. And basically we're gonna go down it's just telling us now, it won't keep doing this, it's just because we first of all done it this way. First time you do things, it's gonna prompt you with what it does. And now we're gonna move down to where it says power, and we've got two options here. We've got enter rest mode, or turn off your PlayStation 4. So let's say now, if you didn't want this in rest mode, so right now I want it in rest mode because I'm gonna be charging up my controller because it's flat. So I'm gonna just press X for enter rest mode. But let's say if you weren't gonna use it for a few weeks and you just wanted it off completely, you would then go to turn off PS4 and you would press X. And this will completely power down the system. And it says here, do not unplug the AC power cord until the power indicator on the PS4 is, so basically you have to, there's a power indicator here. When that's completely gone out, we can then unplug it, not until then. And now it has completely gone out. So right now we are safe to unplug it from the wall if we want it to move this to another room, for example. So that's how you shut it down completely. But normally you will probably just leave it in standby mode because then you can do your things like remote play and also charge your controller. So right now this controller is not charging because we've shut it down completely. Also parental controls, if you're setting this up for younger children, then you might wanna limit what games they can play. So for example, if you have a look here, if you were to set up the players ages three to six, they can only play games that are labeled as three, this is in Europe, and if you were to label it up as 12 to 15, they can only play games that are labeled as 12. And you can clearly see on the games here, to play Horizon Zero Dawn, it says 16, 
seven on Ratchet and Clank and Overwatch is 12. So if you were to set this one for 12 to 15 year olds, then you wouldn't be able to play Horizon Zero Dawn. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it and please subscribe for more how-to videos. Take care, bye now.